Hello everyone, welcome back to my European Space Agency RP-1 career in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. We are basically focused on Mars now and we're going to send over as many support missions as we can before actually sending Kerbals over there. And uh, to that effect, we are going to send a bunch of supplies here. This is actually basically the supply end of Mars Station 1. I don't know if Mars Station 1 will actually be able to capture around Mars. But without the hitchhiker storage container, or whatever they call it these days, uh, this should be able to. This is just the supplies that are part of Mars Station 1. It'll be able to capture, but will it be able to rendezvous with anything? Now, we could aero capture with it, and I think I'll have a Mars Supplies 2 that will try the aero capture route. But, of course, that will have to be shaped differently than this. And also, it won't have docking ports on both ends. This has the benefit of having the propellant-only docking port on one end and the Apollo docking system on the other end. And so that might be convenient depending on what happens. We sort of made this container a little bit different so that we could increase utilization. We've increased utilization on these tanks. Um, it's 16 minutes of burn time still uh, with all the little three kilonewton thrusters or whatever they are. And yeah, we'll see if that tower of supplies works uh, bundle but I think more like a bundle uh, so yeah the it's got some delta V to capture and then rendezvous but not a whole lot so we're looking at we do have 1.68 million uh, of course the launches cost quite a lot these days but we uh, could potentially do with a larger pad for a larger rocket but then that that'll be more expensive too is it supposed to be aligned this way I don't think so Okay, so we are going to have this Mars Supplies 1. Oh, insufficient MMH and Mon 3. Great. Um, we're probably building something there. Well, it's a Nerva 2 launch. Gosh. Okay, fine. Uh, modify. And probably... I mean, but then the next thing I'm going to make will probably need other modifications, but then those modifications won't show up here. <laughs> Uh, just uh, three days, fine. Just go. Do it. Okay, so we'll wait three days. Meanwhile, it would be nice if we didn't have to use like a whole bunch of uh, three kilonewton thrusters and actually got the AJ-10-190 I've been looking for for a long time. Uh, there it is. So we've got it queued up. We've got a lot of science available, but that's really what I wanted. Advanced long nozzle. Anything better around here? The burn time is what's limiting us. We can't use the other AJ-10s because of the burn time. And the efficiency is nice. What do they actually have for the efficiency here? 316. Yeah, that's uh, still 450 seconds. Compared to this, which has, you know, 20 minutes and then that long thing. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, this is much better... Uh, if I'm willing to sit through those kinds of burns. Can't get the hypergolic engines that we want. Merlins are up here. But European Space Agency definitely is not using Merlins. What we need is like the Prometheus engine. But they're not going to give it to us, are they? I'll have to try and add that. Okay, so I'll, I'll queue up more orbital rocketry will probably be necessary. And I guess there's no downside to getting more science-y things. Okay, so we've used up some of the science. I was feeling guilty because I had four digits of science there. Okay, but we do have to pay attention to this probe that I mistakenly allowed to run out of power. So we're going to need to pay attention to that and land it on Deimos and Phobos, hopefully. Okay, so the pad is complete before we pay attention to that, so I'll queue up the construction. And that's too long, though. It's gonna take until October. Let's get the supply launch first. The Nerva 2 launch isn't actually meant for Mars, after all. It could help with a Mars thing if we could get it done in time. It's tempting to stick to this pad because it's an interesting constraint and it'll, you know, interesting constraints make for interesting engineering. Maybe I'll just hire some more people. That didn't speed things up much. <laughs> 
Oh, uh, only a max of one, uh, 2,165 engineers are actually capable of helping at all. So that's... it's not useful to have the rest. Yeah, we, we won't rush. It's not worth it. Okay, so anyway, back to the Ike 1 probe. Okay, well, good enough orientation for power for now. We're not so interested in this particular thing, we just want it to have a very close uh, close approach distance, so... Uh... We'll have to catch up to it. That's fine, I guess. Alright, we will do that. Uh oh, electric charge. Turns out every burn we do happens to have our rear end facing the sun. Okay, remember, no time warping when close to the surface of Deimos or Phobos. Okay, our science is running. I mean, Deimos is where? <laughs> there it is. We'd like to land right here. Because it's sunlit and also the side facing Earth. So, let's slow down. Oh, not that much. Slow down a bit, but also go more like that. Uh. Okay, yes, that. That's what I want. Let's shut off a few engines. We got a central one, that's important. We'll just have that one fire. Still wish I had thrusters here that could push us into the surface, that'd be nice. But okay, nope, just kill rotation for now. Just sort of graze the surface there. I don't know if that's a good policy or not. But at least we won't be hanging out in orbit for a long time due to time warp restrictions. I'll just pull in the solar panels now. Got lots of Delta V to go to Phobos. Really wish I had the other thrusters though. Okay, just trying to come straight down here. I'm just gonna let Phobos' gravity pull me in. How about that? Can't time warp! <laughs> uh, we're waiting. Yes, everything is waiting. Just don't bounce, please, when we're 0.1 meter per second. Oh, it says Deimos' surface, so... We're doing science, we have landed. We have landed because it's doing the science, see? Okay. We have no thrusters on, so there's no concern about destabilizing, but we don't have any contracts for this sort of thing. Oh well. Can I time warp safely now, or should I just walk away and come back after an hour? Nope, it's okay. I don't actually know what the A is. <laughs> um, I hope it's small. Okay, it's all done, I think. Ooh, we hopped up. It could have been bad, but it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. We did all the science. We're uh, we're practically back in orbit. Anyway, no, <laughs> exactly, but that was dangerous. Even at such low levels, we can't time warp very easily. Thinks you've landed when you're actually flying. Revert to launch and try again. Hmm. I, ca I can't revert to launch. That's not how it works around here. But maybe if I... Oh, this is bad. <laughs> I'm, got, I'm got, uh, unable to save. Uh, abandon this mission? No. 
Um, maybe if I change SOIs, it'll be okay, but gosh darn it. Maybe I should go down, land, and go back up. Maybe that's what it wants. Well, I mean... Adventures on Phobos and Deimos are fraught. They look better, but they don't act better. Okay, drifting down again. Oh no, I did too much. Please, they must pull me down. I don't think I can risk time warping again, right? But it's probably not pulling me down because it thinks I'm on the surface, right? I swear it feels like I'm on the surface right now. Okay, now I'm totally on the surface, okay? Game is on the surface. We're landed for sure. Uh, it doesn't say that right now, but okay. Now I'm gonna lift off. Or try to. Might be a little bit sticky here. I broke a solar panel! No! How? They were stowed! I broke both solar panels! No! Our, uh, our, uh, stupid fo uh, Deimos! Deimos! Deimos is done. Not recognizing that I've launched from the surface? Undermining our ability to get to Phobos. That's all that's all it wanted. It wanted to make sure that we couldn't get to Phobos. That's all it is. Still says Deimos' surface. We're doomed. I didn't ask to warp, I just cut the throttle. Now I ask to warp. Come on, game. At some point, you have to recognize that this is not on the surface. It's your fault it bounced. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't produce an orbit for me. I don't know if it'll recognize when I'm out of Deimos' SOI. Oh, boy. But, anyway, this can't get to Phobos anymore. It can't recharge to get there in time. And we still can't see, well, we can't go to Space Center or anything. Well, I guess KSP did make a backup save, a backup persistence file on its own. Maybe I can restore that. Okay, well, I don't have much hope for this situation. It's glitchy anyway. Let me take the risk. Well, it says here land at Deimos. What if I went back to it and see? what's going on here before I try the persistent file method will explode obviously I mean it's got to explode right no it's actually still in midair okay revert to launch and try again you see that doesn't work here oh space just above Do uh, Deimos' surface it says now hold on okay it it's okay I guess does this mean we, we landed, right? <laughs> I mean, I haven't reverted or uh, changed a persistent file in any way. Um, I guess so. We, we did land in this continuity. Just want to say... We wasted some Delta V. We've lost our solar panels, though, so what are we, what are we going to do? We'd have to get to Phobos really, really quickly. Can we? We need, like, an immediate trip to Phobos. Okay, we can get an intercept there. 12 hours. And not too bad as far as the cost is concerned. Um, so, while we're in time warp, we use 38 watts. So let's see how much, that, how much time that gives us. 
not that long. <laughs> um, stupid solar panels. You know, let me get the parameters of this burned down just in case I reconsider, but I think we need something even faster. Five hours. Okay, well that's five hours, but still, I think my calculation showed that we'd be up in three hours, so... And it is pushing it as far as what our Delta V can do for us. We do have to slow down as well. Yeah, I mean, if you take a look at how much it takes to slow down down to here, that's 646. Anyway, I should have just gone to the tracking station immediately instead of trying to land again. That would have saved it. Okay, okay. Um, now we find out about the electric charge. We've got some sort of approach. Ah, uh, we're not going to make it. There's no hole. Yeah, okay. It's dead, it's dead. Okay, we can't make it to Phobos. Delta V-wise, we could have. If only I hadn't tried to land again on Deimos to try and solve that problem, and instead of just gone to the tracking station. But how did I know the tracking station would work? It said it would be abandoning the mission, and I couldn't do that to the poor little probe, but now it's dead. Oh well. Anyway. Uh, we'll leave it be. It was successful on the Deimos part. And that was all it was supposed to do. It wasn't supposed to make up for the failure of the Phobos mission anyway. So it is a successful mission and it got science and we will continue from here. Okay, we have built the two missions that we intend to launch during this window and they are big launches and as a result they take a long time to roll out. Well, Mars Supply 1 doesn't take so long, that's just July 7th, but the station takes extra long. and. Our departure time is August 23rd, so we'll get the one that takes longer rolled out first. And we might have to expedite Mars Supplies one. The window should have some breath to it so that we don't have to launch exactly on time. Let's see. Um, no, plus or minus a few days. Research is pretty good. We don't have that much queued up actually. We should fire some scientists now. Um, uh, yeah, actually let's let's take a look at what else we can put in there. Well, heat shields. We want better heat shields, but I want the inflatable heat shield in particular. Um, that's not what we're getting. It's stock. The infl inflatable heat shield is a stock part. Uh, we know it's in here. Big Gemini capsule. Well, anything to do with Big Gemini is probably cheaty, so that'd be good. <laughs> I guess let, let's let's work our way up here and get that. The problem with this engine, it's only got five ignitions, so that's rough. Bimodal NTR is nice. That's got 60 ignitions. Ah, uh, maybe, maybe we should aim for the top tier NTR. How much? You know, well, we don't have enough science yet, but it's something to work towards at least. So we'll we'll start unlocking this one just so that we can aim to get that. That does have 60 ignitions. This does have a better thrust to weight ratio though. That bimodal NTR does not have such a good thrust to weight ratio. Okay, looks like right now we're close to the blue zone there. Okay, definitely not have anybody on board. Thank you. I'm surprised everybody's trained for that hot habitation module. Uh, I guess it doesn't require a mission training. It just requires proficiency. I don't know. We definitely didn't mission train them for the habitation module. Oh, we're pretty close to longitude of ascending node 350 right now. Uh, maybe we should just go. Uh, SAS on, throttle, that throttle is not working. Throttle is up, and ignition. And launch. You sure this pad is meant for a rocket of this size? <laughs> I mean, it seems a bit small. Finally, a view of the landscape that I 
Right, and I should just... Uh, unfortunately, the landscape on in this area, first of all, uh, tends to clip into the Space Center, but also had way more clouds and distortion than that side. If I could get a better source of it, then we'd be in good shape. Okay, booster set. The HM7s have only one ignition, so we're using a pair to complete orbit and then four to do the transfer. They are more efficient than our RZ20s, but have that drawback of limited ignition. Well, one ignition. Okay, Apoaps is overshot a bit, but I don't know how long these two are going to take. Have a huge amount of thrust. So probably for the best that we uh, have a long time to wap wapsis. Don't even feel the need to pitch down right now. But it looks like we're gonna need at least 500 to make orbits, so we have 3,700 to transfer this thing. It's heavy, I mean... Let's see... We're talking about this launcher trying to get nearly 30 tons to Mars. It's gonna be tough. The supply one is going to be easier because, of course, that doesn't have the habitation module. Okay, well, so we have 3,643. How much is it going to take? Those two are done. ASAP is 4,031. That's not what I was told. It is the right travel time, though. Okay, well, let's see. In total, we have 5,354. It's not great. How much is it going to take to capture? This is always going to be pretty tight, though. Very, very loose capture. Actually, only 662, so it's still doable. Uh, it's going to need some help when it gets there. But uh, it's still doable. So we don't really want this inclination, but that's a mid-course adjustment kind of thing. So could we have our first Mars station? Uncrewed, of course, but it's a start. With plenty of supplies. They're not turning there quickly enough. Come on. Come on. Okay. Go. Alright, those four have lit. They are within their burn time. 950 seconds is 15 minutes and 50 seconds, so... But we haven't used them much. Only 2,000 data units so far. Okay, that stage is over, and we have these little three kill newton thrusters, or four, however, however much they're planning on outputting today. Uh, we've got 12 of them. So we're a little bit off, and it's really, really tight. You can see we might have 1,200 left, but if it was right about how much it takes to capture, we can make this work out for us. Let me kill rotation instead of using this to see what's happening. Oh, we lost it. Okay, well... We'll just go mid-course adjustment on this situation. Now, super touchy as usual. We'd like this to be in line with Phobos and Deimos, too. Uh, that might be something that Tug will have to help with. Well, that's a little bit too close. Okay, so let's say that. 228 for the correction, and then capture burn in 360 days. Now you know why we need a Tug. 700 there. So that's within our budget. We are currently recharging. This is not the optimal orientation for that, but actually... I think as we go along in our orbit, this is okay, but the way the 
persistent rotation works, I think it's not going to lose charge. Uh, we'll just have to make sure that we reorient once we see it again. So let me add the new alarm. That's our mid-course correction. And this has barely enough delta V in order to make this happen. So we'll see if that works out. But we've got a station module on its way to Mars. And then we've got a supply vessel next. And we'll put our tug to use. We're going to try and get the supply vessel to dock with this too. Um, its phasing should be about the same because we're launching in the same opportunity. And we'll see if that works out for us. So anyway, yep, we have our station module on its way. And with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.